And good morning to you. Good to, good to see each of you. And I, I, I love this a little bit more informal setting. My name is Alden Laird. I live in Great Mills, Maryland. Uh, co-pastor a church with my son, who's our lead pastor. And that's in Hollywood, Maryland, which is right next to California, Maryland. So it's kind of a long story, and we moved from Visalia, California, to California, Maryland. And so when the, my church family back in Visalia, which we just visited a couple weeks ago, when they first heard about it, they thought, you know, Pastor Alden is starting to lose it a little bit. He, he still puts California, but that's a true statement, Hollywood and California, Maryland. And uh, my wife, uh, Sue, and I have been there now for five years, just enjoying it. It's a church plant and just a joy of serving with a number of the personnel from Patuxent Navy Air Base uh, along the Patuxent River, close to the Potomac and Chesapeake Bay. Uh, lots of good things there. Let me open in prayer. Lot, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of what we heard. We thank you for each one of our speakers. So much to learn. And as, as one of our speakers just said, help us to really find the, the pay dirt that you would have for us. And I pray, even in these brief moments, if there's a nugget of truth or a couple truths that hit home, that you, your Holy Spirit would take it and help us to truly digest it and make it part of our life message. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3, this is one of my favorite messages because it's so part and parcel of, of what we do in our, in our ministry, in counseling and, and discipleship. It's one of my favorite passages in the Bible because Paul wrote these inspired words to Timothy who was shepherding the saints in Ephesus. He wrote 1 Timothy after being released from prison in Rome about 62 AD. And then he wrote his second letter to Timothy about 66 AD back in prison in Rome and shortly before his execution. So these words that are penned are just shortly before his execution. And my wife and I have been to Rome and have gone down to that Mamertine prison where they believe Paul was in prison before he was executed. So in the first nine verses of chapter three, Paul spoke of the last days <clears throat> in which difficult times will come, how men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, Boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Does this sound like our culture when you hear this? Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Then Paul ended this section by referring to women who are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, and men of depraved mind who opposed and rejected the truth. But on a much brighter note, he contrasted those who had rejected the truth with Timothy, his dearly beloved son in the faith, he then proceeded to provide for Timothy a reminder of the curriculum of a disciple maker. When I saw this passage many years ago, I said, wow, this is it. Uh, this, is, this is the training manual that the Apostle Paul gave to his intern, Timothy. So the curriculum of a disciple maker for Timothy, this was his course outline. This is what he studied. And so, so Paul is saying to Timothy, this is what we've studied. I just want to remind you what's been in the curriculum. And I think it's, it's important for us to see if we're going to mentor people and disciple people and help them grow in biblical counseling and discipleship, there's no better curriculum than what's found right here in the text. So the first thing you can see in your notes is the mentor prerequisite, and that's found in verse 10a. Now you have followed I just want to stop there. You have followed uh, the Greek word there is parakalutheo, and it means to study at close quarters. It, it means you have fully known. William Barclay 
a commentator writes this, it literally means to follow alongside, but it is used with a magnificent width of meaning. It means to follow a person physically, to stick by him through thick and thin. It means to follow a person mentally, to attend diligently to his teaching and fully to understand the meaning of what he says. It means to follow a person spiritually, not only to understand what he says, but also to carry out his ideas and be the kind of person he wishes to be. This is indeed the word for the disciple, for it, is, it includes the unwavering loyalty of the true comrade, the full understanding of the true scholar, and the complete obedience of the dedicated servant. So the mentor pre prerequisite is, is you followed closely. It was, and it was the custom to teach Jewish children.